Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. Elizabeth Zott is not your average woman, but she would say there's no such thing as an average woman. It had happened nearly two years ago. A master's candidate with only 10 days left before graduation, she was still in the lab at 9 p.m., certain she'd found a problem with the test protocol. As she tapped a freshly sharpened number two pencil against the paper weighing her hunch, she heard the door open. Hello, she called. She wasn't expecting anyone. You're still here, said a voice free of surprise, her advisor. Oh, hello, Dr. Myers, she said, looking up. Yes, just going over the test protocol for tomorrow. I, I think I found a problem. He opened the door a little wider, stepping inside. I didn't ask you to do that, he said, his voice edgy with irritation. I told you it was all set. I, I know, she said, but I wanted to give it one last look. The one last look approach wasn't something Elizabeth liked to do. It was something she knew she had to do to maintain her position on Meyer's all-male research team. Not that she really cared about his research. His was safe stuff, not at all groundbreaking. Despite a notable lack of creativity paired with an alarming absence of new discoveries, Myers was considered one of the top DNA researchers in the United States. Elizabeth didn't like Myers. No one did except possibly UCLA, who loved him because the man published more papers than anyone in the field. Meyer's secret? He didn't write the papers. His graduate students did. But he always took full credit for every word. It's the early 1960s, and her all-male team at the Research Institute takes a very unscientific view of equality, except for one man. Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant Nobel Prize-nominated grudge holder who falls in love with her mind. True chemistry results in Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Let's meet my guest, Evie Kirkwood, who is as vibrant as our protagonist today. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Gail. That's quite an intro. That Thank is you quite an Yes, my <laughs> pleasure. But look at us. We are ready for this, aren't we? We look like what we think chemists in the kitchen might look like, right? We got right. our lab coats, we got our goggles. We have our pocket for important information. Right. Yes, maybe and a name tag. We also have a pencil tucked in our Why ear. Why are we wearing a pencil? As I recall, Elizabeth Zott, the protagonist in the story, always had one tucked in her long hair. We both have short hair, yes. so we're... It might fall out, but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna try to keep it in, right? We have our <laughs> goggles. We're prepared for anything that flies up, even food. You're oh. gonna be whipping cream, so you're I'm protected. Gonna, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Things might fly in the kitchen here. Well, when we started talking about this book, I didn't realize it was one of the most popular books of this year, and so many people have read it. It's on standby at every bookstore. But I just wanted to say. Uh, what was your impression of her as the protagonist? Well, you know, this is an interesting time period, right? Because 1960s is the setting, and at that time there was not a lot of recognition for women who had professional careers. And I think what was great about Elizabeth Zott is she was no nonsense, right? And Absolutely. she had high expectations for herself and for others. And I think she just really, you know, pushed the envelope she in did. this story. But she didn't say, I'm going to push the envelope. No. She just, she just did lived it. it. Yeah. She lived right. that way. Right. And I think that's why we had some progress uh, in, in the field. She just didn't say, well, I'm going to get this man. I'm angry. No. Right. I know what I want and I know what I need. Yes. Uh, but, you know, it, it was the right career for her. Wasn't it? It was the right career for her, although certainly she struggled she along did. the way, not because of her own talents, but because of 
society, yes. right? And judgment against women in professional careers, especially male-dominated yes, careers. Yes, and she, she loses a position because she criticized the head of the chemistry department right. for using her paper right. uh, with his name on it. He published it. And of course, all of a sudden, she's been demoted. And, uh, and I guess it was learning how to play the game uh, and, you, and they had to yeah. be very clever, these women at just, that time. Just really, Still kind of like on. a chess game yes. to me, it's like, yes. yeah, right. Um, ha have you ever been in that kind of a situation? Well, you know, I think you and I both probably recall times in early in our lives where there weren't as many uh, things accessible to women, credit yeah. cards. Yes. Car loans, right? Yes. I remember the first time I tried to get a car, buy a car myself. The salesperson said, well, "Bring your husband in, and you know, <laughs> oh, or to get a credit a card, yeah. it had to be in your husband's name." Anyway, That's that right. was the history. Thankfully, it's not that way now. Right. So she's in this very male-dominated industry, I should say, or field, and it's an uphill battle for her. And uh, People like her, they don't know quite how to take her because she's so serious in her pursuit of this. Uh, and along the way, she has to resign or she loses the job and she finds out she can become the host of a cooking show. <laughs> she's a cooking show. I know, it sort of happened randomly because yes. her daughter, whose name is Mad, by the way, we should talk about yes. that, and the producer of the cooking show on television had a daughter in the same class. And, and that's how. Mad always shared her lunch with the producer's daughter. Dinner. He figured out she's a good cook. Yes, right? yes. And apparently asked her to host a show, which came in handy when she lost her job at the Research Institute. Uh, yes, it, exactly. And she became a star. And uh, it, it is this story, too, of as soon as she becomes the host of this show, well, let's talk first. Let's talk about the food we're making. We can kind of then get to the show. So, Evie, what are we cooking today? Well, because chemistry is involved in the cooking show, right? This is the start of the pate choux dough, the dough that you use to make cream puffs. Mm -hmm. So, I've got milk, water, sugar, a little salt in there, butter. I am going to bring that up to a slow simmer and just keep it stirring. You can see it's all nicely mixing. Really what happens is the uh, eventually the eggs that will go in there will bond with the flour yes. and the dough will stretch. That's yeah. the chemistry. And the steam inside makes them puff. There you go. Chemistry. See, this is chemistry <laughs> right in front of your very eyes. This is how she teaches her cooking class. And and at first, people are wondering, she's using such terms as, well, I've brought my, uh, let's see, what is it, my uh, acetic, acetic acid, right? And First yes. show. And, uh, and then she's got her word for salt, and the women are kind of... Sodium chloride, but right? But all of a sudden, she hears the rustling. Women are pulling out pencils and paper, and they're writing all this down. Right. And they, this show grows on people. It grows, and she always has this pencil. So we, we thought we better, we better be dressed for the show, right? right. We have our lab coats and, and we're ready to I go. I think what's fun is really everybody in the TV station thought it was a total disaster, right? Yes. But immediately, as you said, the phone started ringing, people were asking questions. And, and I, yeah. I think the show's success was because Elizabeth t talked to women in a serious, thoughtful yes. manner. Yes, she didn't say, oh, honey's here, we're gonna do something right. good. Your, your husband's gonna love this. Yeah. You know, she was very factual. These women were being taken seriously, and the men that run this show and the advertiser, he, they, they're pulling their hair out. We want something, where's, where's her tight dress? Why is she uh, doing this? And then she tears the set apart because it's all filled with nonsense. Right. All kinds of stuffed things and rubber bands. You've seen those on set pieces uh, for a show. And uh, she has a good time with that, but she doesn't go, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna make trouble. She wants it to be a working she wants kitchen. It to be right, yeah. Well, I'm starting here with my rice, which I will, have for my, uh, well, what do I call this? I've already forgotten. It is a poulet. It is a French uh, uh, chicken Provençal. And I cooked some of the chicken ahead of time because it does take quite a while. 
I have some chicken thighs I've cut, I've cut up and some thyme. We have four uh, shallots that I've trimmed and I've added some um, Oh, these pimentos, which I just love, but a lot of, a lot of people don't like them. Uh, then I'm going to be adding some green onion, uh, green olives, and this is very southern France, green olives, or they can be black olives. And then we will use a whole pint of tomatoes and put that around. It's, it's really a simple dish. And you just use some herbs and spices. Now I've got the olives, I've got the capers. I'm going to put a little cheese in at the end. And then we will slice some chunks of lemon. And that goes into the dish on top. And then I had true, real thyme sprigs. And that's in here. And I know they're going to be some lemon seeds, but who cares? <laughs> they're going to be cooked. Uh, so here we go. This is, this is. The, we did have a, a, a chicken dish in this book. One of the things she liked to make on the cooking show was a chicken casserole. So there that's it perfect. Is. Here it is. Hey, and I just wanted to say I've got my dough out. It kind of comes together in a ball. I'm just going to let it cool for about five minutes. I don't want it to be cold. And in the meantime, I'm going to make the filling for the cream puffs. So this is. Funny to me. This yes, because you you make everything from scratch. I usually make everything Brava from scratch. Bravo for yeah. you right. to you. And homemade vanilla pudding by scratch is pretty easy. It really. is. It it's, really. You, know, milk you can't walk away. You have to stay you in the kitchen. You have to stay there. Remember, that's my motto. Stay but in the kitchen. But in the 1940s, instant pudding came about. And talk about total chemistry. This is total chemistry, right? What makes instant pudding get thick? is the fact that it has gelatinized starch. When that mixes with cold milk, it solidifies. And of course, sugar is also a thickener. And so we're going to use instant pudding. Besides, it'll be fast. So It is fast, isn't it? All the ingredients are right and in And you here. are forgiven. I know you <laughs> like everything from scratch. Well, it's all about chemistry, right? Yes. So that was her specialty. Well, as you're doing that, I am going to put my chicken in the oven. I'm and uh, we will add some minutes. This has to be cooking about 45 minutes to an hour. There goes the milk. Look at that. So Alrighty. we are doing what Elizabeth would have done. Oh, again, she would have mentioned, just like you, that you really want to make this from scratch. Right. She would have. But uh, certainly... Uh, the chemistry is really interesting of sugar. I was researching the molecular formula of sucrose. It's a molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose bonded together to make white sugar. All right, and on that note, as you are beating your pudding here, we're going to take a break. We're going to show you the menu. And when you come back, wow, we're going to keep going here. We're going to keep up with Elizabeth will tell you more about her life and what's going on. We'll be right back. And we're back. And I just want to mention that I've got some rice cooking for my poulet Provençal, and we're going to go now to the pièce de résistance. We're starting with Evie, who is mixing her cream puff pastry, her pâte choux. Pâte choux, yeah. And she's going to dazzle you. I, I, I'm just, I can't believe what she's doing. I and, just added the eggs, and now you just beat it until it gets glossy. Yes. Uh, just making sure it's all incorporated. It takes a couple of minutes to make that happen. You can do this by hand, which I've done, which is kind of a little bit of work. It takes, know. well, and it takes some time. Even yes. though she's strong, she's also a rower. Elizabeth Zott Yes, is. yes. Yeah. Elizabeth is a rower, so she's strong. And she they do let her come and the men look at her oddly, like, what is she doing here? But she comes anyway. And she figured it out. She ended up being a really good rower, right? So this is pretty good. We want it to be glossy. So what I'm going to do now is put it in a plastic bag. 
because that's what I'm going to use to pipe onto the baking sheet. They yes. do take a little while to bake, so I pre-baked some. You did, and, and I'm, while you're doing that, I'm going to top off this last one. I'm taking the top off it, and this is so much fun because everything's working. And the fun thing about uh, cream puff is, as I mentioned earlier, the steam makes pressure inside that dough as it bakes, puffs it up, and then it makes it hollow inside. So you can see each one of those yes. is hollow. That's what, and we'll fill it with our uh, our pudding in just a little bit. Uh, this is chemistry in action. It is. And you know, the next thing you're going to do is is really. Uh, uh, amazing and your children could learn to do this they would love to do this some of the other sidebar characters are in part important in this Harriet the neighbor can come over and watch uh, little Matt or Ma Madeline while Elizabeth does her cooking or she runs into the lab to find out why they haven't done this for her or that uh, and then you have the dog the dog is trained to go and pick up uh, Madeline at school when it's time he knows when to go or Harriet says okay go now uh, and pick up Madeline and he does he trots her home and the man who is the producer for the show uh, his name starts with a W. What Walter, is it? I Walter. think. Walter. Right? Yep. They become fast friends, and he understands. He learns about what it takes to be, you know, a woman in the workplace. And uh, so these are all people that are so important. But the, the second basic character, I think, is Madeline, her daughter, who is five and she looks seven and she can read at sixth grade level because her mother treats her as an adult. And they have a wonderful time. Now, isn't that beautiful? Those are ready to go in the oven. Oh gosh. That's it. They'll puff up. Takes about 30 minutes, which is why I went ahead and pre-made oh, right. I'm just going to set these aside. Yes, yeah, set them aside because the chicken the is baking. Ready eventually. And now for the big moment. The so big this moment. is kind of fun. This is called Density Gradient Lemonade. It's made with simple syrup, which is just equal parts of sugar and water. Uh, yes. And heat it up to help that sugar absorb and lemon juice. But each of these layers has a little bit uh, a decreasing amounts of the simple syrup. So what that does is it sets up a density gradient. The heavier, sweeter, more simple syrup stays on the bottom. So really the trick is if you make, uh, if you add food coloring, that and helps it be more well, discernible yes, yes. in terms of the layers. And she's got her beaker. Now the first one, that's the heaviest one, we can just pour that one in. But, yeah. Heaviest density goes to the bottom. Goes to the bottom. The second one, if we don't be careful, it'll all mix. So the little bartender trick is you pour over the back of a spoon Really slow. Oh, hidden talents, Evie. That's and terrific. Then, yeah. And See, then, it's not mixing with the yellow. No, the yellow stays on the bottom. Because it's not as dense. Right. So it's all chemistry. Yes. Yeah, so really fun. fun. Hey, Gail, you want to get the pudding out of the refrigerator? I love to do that. That would be great because that's what we're going to fill the cream puffs with the instant pudding. Oh. I should so get the a other trick is it's always good if you can. Pour. I'll get a little spoon here. Excuse me. Great. So one of these layers I didn't have any food coloring, so that's the layer I'm working on right now. The ice cubes do help to slow that pour down. So really slow. There we go. I don't think you do this for a, a group of twenty though. You know what, though, it would be super fun. I you think, let them do it. Let them do it, right? Like, I could see doing this for a, you know, preteen yes. birthday party. Because the lemonade actually is really tasty. So, Shall I stir this up a little, or shall I start uh, filling what, some of these? You want to fill? You I'll fill? start oh, in. I have time to fill now, because... All right, then lemon, you fill. Yeah, I fill. Look All at right. that. Instant pudding. It's already solid. See? That's it's, amazing chemistry. Yes, it, it is. <laughs> That's the importance of chemistry. Uh, and so... You can put it here if you want. Or I'm going to do it right here. You're through with this. I now. am. Thank you. Well, literally, all the cream puffs are hollow. I'm just going to put this in there. See, it's just magic how she does this. Well, you know, no, it's chemistry. I was going to say while I'm filling this, one of the things I really did like about the book because there's there's quite a bit of drama and intensity, right? Oh yes, there's some there's some warning chapters that 
kind of, you know, go back to the days when the men took over in a very forceful way. Her love life, Calvin, had a really rough childhood. He was in an orphanage. He ends yeah. up getting killed and in the she, book. Oh, and she's going to have a baby, and she didn't think she was going to do that. And so, but she does, let's talk about her kitchen, what she does to ha engage her daughter and to work at home. When she w was uh, let go from the research institute, she gutted her kitchen and turned it into a chem lab, a chemistry lab, so that she could do things like make coffee on a Bunsen burner, yes. which I don't know why you would do that, but that's well, she's a scientist. She's a she, scientist. Likes, she likes using her particular apparatus. And she and the lady across the way said, well, you've done 20 steps here. You could just use the <laughs> just Folgers make coffee, right? and make coffee. But she said, oh, it's the best it's coffee the best. I ever had. Yeah. Harriet, so, the neighbor, does play a nice role, doesn't she? She is there to save her. Whenever she needs a babysitter or she wants to go rowing, Harriet is absolutely f delighted to get out of the house because her husband is right. annoying. Yes. He's really annoying. Yes, and exactly. And uh, so, you know, we have just a few minutes to talk about all of our food. You're filling up your... Uh, the little cream puffs. I'm going to put them on nice? a little dish. Oh, yes. And here are the drinks made possible by Chemistry. And Evie, yeah, isn't this nice? Really nice. You know, one thing we're lacking is we're lacking 6.30 here in the studio, right? The dog? The dog, yeah. The dog uh, was uh, named by the fact that it came home one day with Elizabeth, as I recall. Calvin, her significant other, hollers out the window, some question, and Elizabeth looks at her, her watch and says, 6.30, and that's what they assumed the, the dog's name was, and so it stuck. So the yes. cute dog's name. And I'm going to bring out my chicken, my poulet. It's not quite done, but it's done enough to present Ooh, itself. It smells great. I put it here. We want to talk about our food. Ooh. And some French people don't use cheese on top. Uh, do you notice that you can go to a restaurant and get cheese in your soup, cheese in your salad, and cheese in the main dish? That probably is too much cheese. A lot of cheese. cheese. But I'm going to put a little Parmesan in. And so we have the, we have the chicken casserole from the book. We have the cream puffs made possible by chemistry. chemistry. Yes. Yeah. One thing I will mention, I didn't pipe all the dough. You can save this dough for like four days in the refrigerator and bake it later. So that's a nice little time saver. And you, that's the last one. This oh, is the last yeah. one. It doesn't fit on my plate. So I just oh. might have to eat this one. Well, you Why may not, have to right? eat it. <laughs> you may just have to I'm do that. I'm just going to add a little more confectioner's sugar to this one. It doesn't fit on my plate. I am just putting the last of the confectioner's sugar. That just gives it a little wonderful. pizzazz, just doesn't it? Wonderful. wonderful. Right? Yes. You know, speaking of pizzazz, uh, I know we talked about Elizabeth being an avid rower. Yes. It's really popular on the St. Joseph River, right in our area, it right? It is. It is. It is very popular all over the place. Take a look. We'll be right back. Let's just review our food. I did some rice for my chicken, uh, my classic chicken poulet Provençal, and tell cream us what puffs, you did. cream puffs, and the density gradient lemonade in multicolored layers. That's my favorite. It's I, festive, isn't I it? I think it's very festive. Children would love to do that Absolutely. at a birthday party. Birthday party would be Yes. Fun. You wanted to talk about Julia Child. Well, you and I were chatting uh, quite a while while we were reading yeah. this book about how Elizabeth Zott reminded you of Julia Child, and I was intrigued by that. You, well, you know, the sense that Julia didn't have a, a, a scientific lab that she looked over, but she did everything by the book when she first started. She learned how the French made their food, but she 
she was very worried the first few seasons, but later on she relaxed and she had the same kind of output and business-like uh, sense. Uh, spoke her mind. Yeah, yeah. She just said like exactly Elizabeth. what she, she asked me. I met her and she said, I spoke French to her. She said, oh, <laughs> oh, do they speak French in the Midwest? And, I, and it was just, you know, she just got to the point and that was it. Right. And uh, it's kind of similar to she, Elizabeth yes, Sachs. Yes, yes. But Elizabeth is this sophisticated blonde and all of that. Read the book. It's fun. It's fun. It is fun. It's, it's, it's not a serious take on, on chemistry, but it's a fun take on woman's life in the 60s in science. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Gail. You always do a great job. Thanks. You're always welcome. Fun. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Remember, good food, good friends, good books, good science makes for a very good life. We'll see you next time. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.